about the symposium, it's actually closely linked to the design philosophy and approach of the Studio Urbane Landschaften. The title, Let's Walk Urban Landscapes, it's already meant to prepare everybody to get active. And let's dive directly into Hanover's urban landscapes. We want to link the experimental, the intuitive, and the rational capacities of all of us by integrating everybody in the creation of new knowledge. To introduce different research tools and formats in the different workshops, which have all a common theme. They engage everybody physically, emotionally, and mentally in the joint experience of exploration and reflection taking Hanover's urban landscapes as a case study that also represents different urban landscapes and global challenges that we are actually facing. So all the workshops, they are based on the principle of walking. By walking, we mean the direct physical involvement, the bodily experience of moving through a landscape, directly perceive what's happening out there and come back here and share the different experiences so our overall aim is together we will share the experience of diving into an intense and creative process of understanding. It's like an experiment of actively developing transformative knowledge. Not only talking about it, but doing it. for this project because normally I'm not working with this kind of I marked when I left the forest so out of the forest was another pattern of knitting when inside the forest Street names, make a list of the next 10 street names you can invent from these words a story. Find an insect and follow it. If you have some time left, take a coffee break and then return to the Herrenhäuser Gärten. I've always been interested in how to find ideas. And from the beginning of my work here, my focus has always been at the very beginning, and that's also what this workshop will be about. And we would like you to start with a very simple practicing moment. Just come with us into that space and just try to be aware of that absolutely simple space, which is not an urban landscape, not at all. It's a box, let's be honest. You might shift your attention to the noises around you, what you can hear. And I think I chose this spot because it was probably the space with the biggest space around me and at the same time more or less close to the window. <laughs> I came here because I found that corner much too boring. <laughs> then I walked over to the window and I touched some surfaces and I decided to walk back into the center and coming here Eyes closed, I touched Christina, and that was such a nice feeling that I decided to stay right here <laughs> and put my head down on the spot. I have this hip defect, which I only discovered a couple of years ago, and the interesting thing about that, it makes you so much aware of how you move, so you start to experience your surroundings in a different way because you really have to be careful where you put your foot and if you slip off a stair you will feel it for the next week or so. For me it started in the private realm as well. I'm a patient hiker and I did that uh, whenever I could. But I, I soon uh, found out that it might be interesting because I started designing landscapes I walked through and this was not only nice landscapes, not only like picturesque mountain landscapes, but every kind of landscape. For a while, you don't consider the other one. Try to occupy the space empty, but without any force, like water, no? Yeah. 
Don't transform this exercise in a proposal of gestures, but keep in mind the attention to the point of view. Find a way to lie on the desk, watching the sailing. Slow, slow. Do something strange, but find a comfort. We thought of something to warm up for tomorrow where you go outside and do storytelling and let your walk be guided by conversations with people you meet. With me, it was originally my mom's. Um, and, oh, okay. Target. Yeah, United and she States. thought uh, I would need a Target. water bottle when I travel. Bottle when to here. It has a no nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Important. So now I just keep it because I realized it's the only thing on my keychain that's not keys. I kind of like it with something else. Um, this is my, my book. I'm always carrying it. Not in my pocket because I've got nothing in my pocket. But, uh, never. Oh, I think you meant to do that one. <laughs> From generation to generation. Yes. You were the mouse. Share your experience. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a nice experience in Sudolus also would like to say becoming mouse. <laughs> I also decided that the mouse is not a cartographer. The mouse is someone who orients him or herself through cartoons. <laughs> I discovered a sign saying "Privat Grundstück." I am a mouse. I don't understand what this so is. So I was deciding that um, I'm a city grandmother. I probably lived all my life in the city. And I also decided that I'm so old, I'm having a walking stick. So I was taking my time. And at first it was all really beautiful. There was a proper sidewalk. On the left there were beautiful gardens. But then I saw that I can't go on because there was a construction site. <laughs> I encountered loose pebbles like this between the rails was not very stable. Then was even worse because that was a terrain of grass and my walking stick got stuck there. Here we're using the object and the drawing or map um, as the and the story that are very colorful and interesting to represent the experience of navigating with a specific perspective. Walk always for the whole day towards the sun and reflect on looking at the Alps. <laughs> Could be more to do than one step after another. Count your steps until you arrive at the date of today, buy a bottle of water and turn it. Walk in the direction it points. Wissen Sie, wo wir hier Wasser kaufen können in der Nähe? On the way, on our journey, we should take a look on like five different categories and we should write down or sketch down things we see on our journey connecting to these categories. Uh, image I changing action, something. Yeah. for example. And in the end, we will Bring find, the yeah, you take your favorite one of yeah. each category. Or random, right? That's what they said. We can also choose it random. Oh, yeah. That's our Let's. task. <laughs> Let's go.
slowly, slowly, slowly. Be careful. 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 You have all the time. When we put the hand on the cross light, mm -hmm. that was the first stop. Oh. How is your feeling? Very yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Super interesting. Yeah, also for me. Captain, terminus of line four, yeah, yes. all right. I'm following the line on the map. The rule is then to be attentive to the atmospheric questions. For instance, soundscapes. What do you see and uh, how could I characterize the atmospheres in a given area? But it, it was easy to follow this line until here, where we are in this Familiengärtnerverein Kibitzwiese. And I mean, this was really a contrast to what uh, I have seen in the other places. Now suddenly, what one could call the Gemeinschafts atmosphere it turned up. I did a small interview with Wilfried Diederich. I asked him whether or not there's still a good Gemeinschaftsstimmung here. He said there is, but 50 years ago it was better. At that time we were only Germans. Now we are Germans, Italians, Russians, and so on and so forth. One could say that globalization also has shown its face in this area, so uh, the feeling of being together here is not as good, Wilfred would say, as it was early on. I kind of felt a little bit like an alien walking around here. Um, there are not many people and I tried to talk to some of them and um, some of them they didn't have any time and one lady didn't understand me because I can't communicate in Russian and I tried to stop an old man on the bike and he uh, responded to me with some words, but he suggested, okay, maybe you should go down Lippertsweg there. There's another lady also interested in the area here, and 
So I met Anna again. So there were two aliens, <laughs> even from different groups. He was passing by again, the man on the bike, and said, okay, where such der findet? And so we found each other. I do both visual notes and the notes that I write down. And then we also have to collect objects. This neighborhood here, it just hits me with a lot of nostalgia in a way that the square has this atmosphere to it. It's like the time is standing still and there is this uh, machine where you can get these uh, small plastic bubbles with some kind of jewelry inside that reminds me of my childhood. And it actually said in one of the windows, uh, it says that uh, Alice had sinusitis. Everything has its time. It's like it had its time and now the shops are closing and the life around it has changed. If I had, was heading towards a destination, I wouldn't have noticed that corner. It would just be something that would have been on the way. Yeah. Da haben wir natürlich ja viele, es ist wirklich mm. viel, viel Tierwelt hier, ne? Ja, ja. Die und Stehwaldnähe. Eben, ja, und ah. die, die wunderbaren hohen Tannen haben wir da ja. auch, aber da ah. stellen wir jetzt gerade einen Antrag, weil wir starten, dass die endlich Gegen den sind. Tannen? Ja, die weil sind, die so viel Schatten... Die machen ja nicht nur Schatten auch, die gehen ein und die sind umgekippt jetzt bei den Stürmen. Ach so. Und dann würde mm. alles äh, zerstört werden, mm. am Haus, Stimmt. das Dach und ja, die Kinder, die spielen vor allem. Ah. and the things on and people had to start finding we just draw the outlines Ja, 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 ja,
I think it's also just nice not knowing what's inside of them. That's nice. So where's my chew? Here's my chew. <laughs> So I want to thank you all for this very productive day and afternoon and just remind you that we switched modes. We were working this morning and now we were expressing what we had perceived, ideas, questions, and it's a quite different mode. And in between, you put on these tables downstairs a new name for the region you went through. So you did actually three steps. You did the walks, you did this naming, and then you did this meshwork. And I think it's very important to let the night happen, to really let it sink down and look at it again tomorrow. And so at this moment, I just would like you to, as you already do, walk around and look and realize how the others are looking at your work, which is a very special thing, too. basically not an artwork, something finished and done and exhibited here, but an open work. It can be worked on. And that is what we would like to start this morning. Mesh is something which somehow, again, puts things in motion. So mesh work is definitely not an art exhibition, nor a spatial analysis, nor a fully fledged planning program for Hanover. It is rather or let's say it is nothing less and nothing more than the start of a transformation. And I think what we've been seeing here over the last number of days is, is, is this confluence between activity and active walking um, and this idea of perception. And it seems to me that today and for the future, we're starting to look much more at where our perception of, of this method and this walking might go. This was crossing borders. This is um, the long walk gave me the chance of crossing real borders and making complexity. Uh, what we see here is a very, very early stage, so sort of the very first expression people have found after um, going for a walk. And that's usually something what is done many times when people go on sites. It's not something that usually gets expressed or shown, shared, discussed and used as material. We have this work as a starting point of dialogues rather than to see them as a result or something that can be read only in its own without a conversation. If you put those four works together, that could be something like an idea to make the next step of a, yes, not only designing process, what you do is to develop and to transform. And developing is more than designing only. It's a nice method to come ahead before we have so much 
money and energy spent in a process which can't work. What I like is that the whole situation is very heterogeneous and that it uh, reflects on several senses. It's my expectation is to create a kind of balance between the chaos and order, create some order from the noise that we have produced. And maybe this plot over there, it shows us as, I guess, new lines through the city, new connections, new, new dimensions. We are part of the meshwork, and not only now, but also yesterday when we produced it. So the process of producing is already part of the meshwork. Individual box is an invitation to have an individual voice. And maybe we need some tools that uh, demand more of us and make us more uncomfortable at the outset, force us to work together in ways that are disturbing. Understanding the movement uh, and what the movement causes as part of the design, as an important part, even not only as a preparation, but really leading very, very far in all further results. And so one perspective is also to look at the whole thing we did. When we started, we had this white urban landscape. Now we have a very colored, differentiated urban landscape, which in my opinion looks kind of like Hannover with different parts. Some are very beautiful, some are kind of ugly, some are boring, and they are next to each other and there are not many connections. Not that they have to be connected at all, but it tells something about its difficulties. Maybe that's my first impression of the whole. You also use this very interesting notion of Raumgeschehen. And the Raumgeschehen, I find it very intriguing because if you translate it into English, Geschehen means to happen but also to take place. Now it's something that takes place in a space. And this I find very interesting. It takes place so you have a, you know, a localized version, but at the same time there is a larger space. Feel something is changing also in reality, not only in our minds and in our theoretical thinking. And this is quite a different way of thinking about science, to even have the idea that we should actively change something as scientists. We are not only influencing these processes, all these processes have become hybrids. It seems too dangerous to question the basic assumptions. But of course, from a theoretical point of view, this would be incredibly interesting. But the first step is to be courageous and say what I found out, okay, I tested. Is this a process of art or is it a process of science? It's both. But it needs to be linked to something that is a pressing actual issue. So there's a question. What was the question behind organizing the whole event? To explore new pathways in design and research. And the aim is kind of always the indirect uh, phrasing of the question. We need to really actively shape, we need to transform, something needs to be seen. So let's continue working to do that. Thank you.